Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Wednesday, October 4th, 2017. Hope you're having a good trading week. Once again, very dull session as we just kind of drift higher, little gaps, little whatever. NASDAQ side, especially this time, was so flat throughout the day. You'll see that when we look at the intraday action. You know, we can say new closing highs on the markets again, but it just doesn't matter when it's virtually untradeable. Having said that, we did have up to a 10-point winner on a Tesla call, so you can't complain. Uh, let's take a look. This is the ES front month futures contract daily chart, the broad market and futures form. I mean, just not much to say, obviously, right? It's just, it continues to drift. Uh, crude oil down 24 cents to 50.17. Not much to say there either. Gold down a buck 20. That's a blip. S&P cash, therefore, closed up $5.46. NASDAQ 100 up 13.14, but it's still under the pink risk line from the 13 sell signal. So the sell signal Still in place there. Sox up three. Another blip. Biotech's down seven. That's also a blip for the bios. The VIX actually gained six cents to 951. Uh, the trend closes super low at 0.68. That rolls that 10 day moving average. Now let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, 10 days back is going to drop off tomorrow. It's under one. So I don't see us getting anytime soon down near a sell signal on the trend 10 day moving average. NASDAQ volume 1.9 billion shares again. Same as the last two days. A lot of lot better volume considering nothing's going on to start the quarter here at all. Advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ plus 207. On the New York plus 376. Google gains back $4.61, keeping it away from that breakdown point into the gap that it's been flirting with. Apple up 67 cents. Amazon down $2.09, kind of a blip on the $1,000 stock. Netflix up 218. I mean, none of this is taking us anywhere new. Tesla up 616. TLT, the 20-year bond ETF, up 12 cents. Goldman Sachs up 97 cents. All right, let's take a look at that intraday action. So five-minute candles. We had a 13 sell signal right at the close on the five-minute chart. We gapped up a little bit over that risk line there. Look at this, a new 13 sell signal right at the close today. But look how, look how boring these candles are. I mean, it's just drifting. First two hours were, three hours were a waste of time. And then after lunch, you know, we drifted two more points higher. Ooh, that's what gets you to the 0.5. Uh, what's funny is on the on the NQs on the Nasdaq side, you know, we gapped up a little bit more. We pushed a little higher towards the highs of the prior day, which we never broke, by the way. Then came down and look at that rollover. The low of the day is actually the gap fill. On um, if you can see the uh, what you can't see here is the 15 minutes at, after the close of the prior day, which is part of the futures contract trading. So it literally filled the gap to the tick. And then look how flat the Nasdaq was. I mean, basically an eight point range for the rest of the uh, the session for five hours. Horrible. Um, not much else to say then beyond that. Let's take a look at the data that's coming out this week uh, on Wednesday. We've got the NBA Mortgage Applications Index at 7 a.m. We've got the ADP Employment Report at 8.15. PMI Services Index at 9.45. ISM Non-Manufacturing Index at 10. Weekly Crude Oil Inventories at 10.30. you got Janet Yellen speaking at 3.15. There's still a chunk of data left for the week. Uh, a lot of it's on Thursday, though, um, and before we head into uh, next week. And again... Just a reminder, next Monday is Columbus Day. Banks are closed even though the stock market is open. It's generally a waste of time. You'd prefer not to even be open in that scenario. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Just see what we get. Have a great trading Wednesday.